All right, so after you get your mainframe tacked together, as you can see, I got mine here. I have it flipped around, so the top is here and the bottom is down here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the bottom legs at the correct width, and then we're going to weld up our seam solid. So the, way, the best way to do this is um, you're going to use the edge of your work table, and you're going to measure and put two lines that are the width that your outside of your bottom legs need to be. So refer to your blueprint diagram. Um, it will be on there for the main frame. But for Ford, it's going to be 73 and 3 quarter inches from the outside of your bottom leg to the outside of your other bottom leg. And for Dodge, it's going to be 71. So, I mean, I'm building a Dodge rack, but it's not going to matter. Just follow the blueprint on the width. So I have measured out two marks on my on the edge of my table that are 71 inches apart so if you have a 72 inch table you're going to want to measure half inch from each end so there'll be a 71 inch 71 inch spread between your lines etc etc so i'm going to go ahead and give you a close-up of how we're then going to clamp the legs to the edge of your table all right so i've rotated the table around so i can show you guys how to clamp this um, to get your width correctly. So, I mean, this is the bottom of the rack, top of the rack, left side, right side, obviously. So on my work table here on the edge of it, I have my two marks that are representative of the width of your rack from the bottom outside to the other bottom outside. So my two marks are 71 inches apart, which is for a Dodge. If you're doing a Ford, your mark should be 73 and three quarter inches apart. But again, you can refer to the blueprint. Um, of the diagram of the outer rack. So um, I'm just going to show you how to clamp this and get it exactly perfect for when we weld the seams up. So the reason we only welded the inside was so that your rack has a little flexion in it. So I mean more than likely if you measured it right now it's not going to be the correct width but that's okay because we designed this so it has flexion. So um, we're just going to start by clamping one side down. So I have my sharpie mark right here. So one thing that will make this easier is you're going to want this edge of your um, tube flush with the edge of your table. So I use a magnet. You can also use a square um, and just put this right here. And then basically, I'm just going to rotate this and get it so it's touching this, so it's square with the edge of your table. So once you do that, and then obviously I'm going to set this so that the outside corner is flush with my Sharpie mark. And then... Um, I'm going to clamp it to the table. You can either use a C-clamp or a vice grip. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp this right at the edge of my Sharpie mark. The outside edge should be wherever your mark is. And it should be flush with the edge of your table. So go ahead and do that and clamp that down. And then once you do that, you're going to do that for the same, the same thing on the other side. So you might have to push and pull the other side a little bit. Um, so I have my other mark down here. And it's need a little bit of pushing and pulling. But again, get it flush with the end of the table. All right, so once you have your two sides clamped, again, these edges should be flush with the edge of your table. And um, the overall outside width should be whatever it says on the blueprint, 71 for a Dodge, 73 and 3 quarters for a Ford. So I'm going to go ahead and measure just to verify from the outside to the outside. Oh, I'm actually going to do it this way. So mine is 71 on the dot. So I'm going to call that good. All right. So once you get your um, your sides clamped at the proper length, um, what I like to do is go ahead and tack weld the outside corners of each side. That way it doesn't move and it also frees up your clamps. So as you can see here, I've just tack welded this to the table and do that at both ends. Make sure you verify that it's the correct width before you tack it. And then after you got it tacked down, we'll move on to the next step.
All right, so I've rotated the table back around. So, I mean, you got your left side, right side, top of your rack. Um, your edges should be tacked down to your work table at this point. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clamp down the rack and then we're going to tack and solid weld all of our joint seams. So the first thing I would do is clamp down the top of your rack to your work table. Um, if you don't have multiple clamps, you can just tack weld it. Make sure your tack weld is small and easy to cut as you'll have to remove that. But I like to clamp it at the top, kind of, you know, halfway between the edge and the center. Um, the more places you have it clamped and welded, the less likely it is to move when you weld it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tack the outside corners. We already have the inside corners of our joints tacked. We're just going to tack the outside corners. Um, when you tack them, I would clamp them just to assure that you have a flat seam edge on all of your joints. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp and tack weld the outside corners of all of these joints. So I'm going to go ahead and tack weld all these. All right, so after you get um, all of your joints tack welded, so you should have four tack welds on each seam, one on each corner, inside and outside. Then we're just gonna solid weld um, the inside, the top, and the outside seams of all of these joints. So, I mean, just um, at this point, you should have both of your edges tacked and clamped. So that way, when we heat this metal up and weld it, it's not gonna move around. So go ahead and weld up all your seams and um, then don't move your rack after that because we want it to cool in this clamped and tacked position or else if you if you unclamp it and remove it too soon your your um, sides could still pull to the inside so go ahead and weld these seams up and we'll head on to the next step